Hello, it's David. Now, today I'm turning my attention back to this Amiga 500 that I picked up off eBay that was listed as an uh, attic find. Um, it booted up, everything seemed to be working fine apart from the keyboard. There'd been a battery leak inside and, and it looked like it had damaged a section of the keyboard um, under here where the um, the circuit board uh, is. So what I thought uh, we'd do today is um, open them up, have an inspection of this keyboard, take it apart, maybe let's have a look at the circuit board, um, let's have a look at the membrane, see if we can see anything obviously wrong with the membrane, that's normally the thing that fails here and that needs replacing, but let's have a quick look, see whether there's anything we can do to patch it up, maybe there's a simple fault on the circuit board, um, and if we uh, if we don't get anywhere, we'll order ourselves a membrane and uh, have a go at fitting that. Okay, well, let's open up this keyboard and do some probing. Looks like we have to pop this uh, cable tie off. These do look fairly corroded. Now I'm not sure whether I have to disconnect this first to take this out, or whether I take the keyboard off first. Um, if I unplug this now, which I could do, I don't know how I'd ever get it back in again. Well, I think we'll give it a go. Oh, I just realised it's a it's a zero insertion force socket. I nearly ripped it out of the. Oh, that's stiff though. There we go. Okay, I hadn't realised that's. That's a cover. I should have watched Gadget's videos. I'm naughty, aren't I? PCB A500. 56A602A. This is looking in very poor condition. Okay, let's see if this lifts off. Okay, I don't think this black is anything other than just the, a bit of paint. Uh, a little bit of rust, some discoloration here. That might be a bit of a hint as to what's going on. Uh, water ingress, perhaps. Uh, this was the battery, wasn't it? So it could be, yeah, battery alkali ingress. Okay, and so let's have a look at our actual membrane. Looking here down at it closely, you can see it's grubby. There's certainly a lot of dirt. There's been some nasty goo ingress here. Uh, but the tracks, there's no obvious problem that I can see at first glance. Maybe a little bit of... Is that... Uh, Is there anything structurally wrong there? I have to get that under, uh, under the magnification. I don't think it is, to be honest. A little bit of corrosion ingress again, just down here, I think. I think some gentle wiping might be in order. This is likely, I think, to be my biggest area of concern, the actual connector itself, that does look fairly grotty. Some of those don't look too healthy, but again, until they're cleaned up, very difficult to say for sure. Okay, so I've got some warm soapy water here in my uh, garden hand sprayer. Uh, and I'm just going to very, very lightly dust this. And even more lightly, rub it down. Uh, 
Now over on this side, shows up here on the white background, you can see there's a fair degree of detritus here. Maybe that's on the rear. Now we can be a bit more um, aggressive on the rear because uh, there's no contacts on here. There we go, get rid of that. We should see a resistance between that pad on number three, and I'm trying not to point, go, go in with the, the, the end of the um, probe now, but those two should have a resistance between them, a low resistance. Nothing, nothing. That's very low. Okay, so let's trace this round a bit. So this is right at the tail end of X2. Those are all X2. Okay, and where does X2 come out? X2 is pin 7 on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so there's obviously a break somewhere. So is the one on the corner X2? No, the one on the corner is X7, sorry. So there's no further connections from here, which is, it does have continuity, before then. So there's nowhere else to jump to it. We can see in these, uh, nowhere else to test it. I mean, we can see it exists in these jumper points here, but um, I don't know, unless we stab through, I don't know whether that would actually get a, a valid connection. I suppose we could test with one that's uh, that's small. So maybe I could stab through from here to here and see if we get anything. That did require quite a lot of pressure, that's probably not good for it. In fact, I've actually come through the, the entire membrane there. Um, where does that go to? Okay, well it's not damaged it, so that's good. So, all right, I might be able to uh, stab into these and see whether it uh, whether we have continuity. So, X two, the first jumper is this this one here. This is the X two line. So let's stab into that. So that's good. What about the bottom side of that jumper? In fact, is that some damage? It might be damaged there. No, we've got connectivity there, okay. I think I may have to admit defeat on this. On the first one that I've checked, the uh, it's not, I don't believe it's just a case of the connector being bad. I think we do have problems with the lines and it seems to be around this area which is not really surprising given that this was where the uh, battery fluid ingress occurred. I've now punched great big holes in my membrane which uh, probably does nothing to help things. So I think it may be time to uh, concede defeat and uh, try and find myself a new membrane. Might as well pop the board back together and just give it one more test. Now that we've had a little bit of a clean, but uh, it looks like it's uh, broken on the on a level that's uh, beyond visual inspection, sadly. I'd like to thank this video's sponsor and the supplier of my project PCBs, PCB Way. PCB Way aren't just about PCBs either, although they are extremely good at that. They also offer component assembly. CNC machining, 3D printing, and a variety of other manufacturing services. They have a number of community-focused offerings too. The Shared Project Hub is an open platform for makers to share and exchange their ideas, and the PCBWay store is a great place to pick up assembled modules. I mean, who wouldn't want a musical Tesla coil? So many thanks again to PCBWay, and I recommend you have a look at some of the links included down below.
There we go. So the delete still working helps not. Yep. Okay. So no change. That's how we how we started. So it does look like, uh, to all intents and purposes, it's going to be a new member. Win. Okay, so time has passed and I've uh, found myself a replacement membrane. Uh, this one is from RWAP Software. Uh, there's the address and it's come to me in a folded over uh, piece of uh, cardboard, which seems a perfectly fine way to ship a, a membrane. And here we go. It's a nice blue colour. Uh, and this has uh, cost me uh, the princely sum of £30 with shipping so uh this is the business side it's got the pads here there's the connector it all looks uh, it all looks rather nice now truth be told the reason why i've put this off for so long is i really didn't fancy going through all of these uh screws again but this is where um, a gift i've been sent could come in handy this is uh, from kai wheats kai wheats and um uh, it's an electric screwdriver set uh, with magnetic tips, 360 degree LED light and precision bits, apparently. So um, very, uh, very kind of Kybrick to get in touch with me and offer to send me this uh, for, uh, for my personal use. So um, let's open it up and um, give it a try. So this is genuinely the, uh, the first time I've opened this. Uh, kept it to one side for really this project. Um, so it's got 120 pieces in here, blah, 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 blah. hex torques, torque security, blah. I don't even know what some of the U-type, yeah, disassembly accessories, oh that's very nice, oh, let's, let's give it a go. So first thing we've got is a user manual, which I shall uh, almost certainly read at another time, and a Big Velcro wrapper. Doesn't all fit in shot. Well, what do we have in here? Mobile phone repair mat, screw memory mat. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's sort of like a rubberized, it's like a mouse mat style thing of old. Uh, or maybe it's magnetic. Uh, nothing in there, and the, look, just a little flap there. Oh, we've got a sucker there for pulling screens off things. This is the uh, presumably the main tool itself. Ah, you hear that? In and out. I imagine. And uh, looks like we've got a flexible end effector, end attachment, metal spudger, plastic spudger, anti static brush, tweezers, plectrums, USB C cable, that'll be for charging, I imagine. Yep, yeah, oops. Uh, USB C on the bottom. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in there. Mobile phone, SIM card remover tool. Anyway, ooh, and that's just fallen out. Anyway, it's got a nice lot of stuff. Uh, crucially, can I use it to get into this keyboard? So these are very small Phillips uh, head screws, as we can see. So um, that looks like it's going to be. So that looks like it's going to be something from the first set here. Uh, maybe this one. I don't know what the numbers mean. That's about right. Let's try that. Okay, so that's got a, a hex end effector and that's a little hex bit. That seems to just be magnetically captured in there, which is nice. Give it a try. I assume back is unscrew. Indeed it is. Crikey. Uh, <laughs> I need somewhere to put my screws. I'm looking around, I don't have a... Uh, 
a bottle top or something, so I'll use this mat. That's uh, yeah, kind of what it's there for. Is it magnetic? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, I do. All right. So, so let's get on with it. Uh, it's purely cylindrical. There's not a lot of grip on here. So when it they're a little bit tight, it keeps twisting in my hand. I don't know whether I'm missing a a rubber grip or something. Well, that was certainly quicker than it could have been. So, I established earlier that this was a zero insertion force in point. So uh, that should be sufficient to release the circuit board. There we go. So goodbye Mitsumi green keyboard membrane. I barely knew you. And hello RWAP blue keyboard membrane. Fits like a glove. The hand in your glove. Not a glove on your foot. That would not be very good. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the board. I think that's enough to test with. It's like if 1980s Japan went into cigar manufacture. Hmm. Okay, so here we go. Keyboard's back in the base. We're connected up. We've got our wires in. We've got our TV here hooked up. Slightly nicer TV this time. Um, I've got my Amiga Atari mouse connected and uh, got my GoTech in here. And we will give it. A, we'll turn it on and we'll run the um, the system test software, I can't remember what it's called, Amiga Test Kit, we'll run that. So uh, let's uh, throw the switch, we'll get the uh, Amiga Test Kit there in the drive. That's good, we've got the green light on, so hopefully not blown up too much. Keyboard. Escape. This is looking promising. Right, well there are two blanks there that haven't tested positive, but um, they don't appear to actually exist on the keyboard. It's where that would and that would be, so I imagine that might be for other languages. So perfect, I think that's actually done the job. Brilliant. So I think it's time for the old, uh, the old Kaiwitz uh, screwdriver to earn its keep again, and we'll, uh, we'll get those other screws in place. Okay, let's just put this... Uh, uh, cable tie back, I think this came through here, and that just appears to be a little bit of strain relief, which uh, as a man who has had uh, broken wires on his, uh, on his ST and Falcon keyboards, uh, I think that's a jolly good idea. So what we'll do is we'll make sure there's a bit of slack on this end of the uh, of the connection as it goes into the uh, the PCB, and then we'll tighten up the cable tie. 
So I'm really pleased that that membrane seems to have sorted out the key issue here on the, on this old A500. Um, and obviously the, the circuit board there is still pretty poor looking. The, uh, the chips on there are in pretty poor shape and uh, that was obviously um, right at the forefront of where the battery leak occurred. So I did actually uh, source myself a replacement PCB here, which, uh, which looks an absolute beauty, to be honest. Uh, so this says here, reverse engineered by Rob Peeper Taylor. Rob Taylor. So I think I just picked this up on, on eBay. Um, and it does look great. Um, so I think that's probably a project for the future. I don't think I'm going to do that in this video. Uh, and that just goes in there and replaces that. Obviously, you have to salvage all the components, uh, or the, at least the custom ones, off there. Uh, so that is quite a, a task. And I may actually make things worse by desoldering. So um, that's for when I'm feeling a little bit braver. But now we do have a working keyboard, and we can interact with the machine a little bit. I don't know if you recall, when I got it, there was this uh, extra, presumably half a megabyte, expansion uh, card here in the trap door. And uh, I think it's obviously a real-time clock as well. You can see it's still fairly manky because the battery that was on here um, was the source of all this corrosive uh, alkali leak. So um, I cut the battery off and I, I've soaked it and, and rinsed it, but I haven't actually done any other cleanup on here. So these are actually still pretty furred up and I had just assumed that this was going to go in the bin. But um, I was thinking, why don't, we, why don't we just plug this in Temporarily, I wouldn't leave this in the machine, I don't think. Uh, why don't we uh, we plug this in? It's got a ram, ram on off switch there. I don't know if that's going to work. Um, and give it a go whilst we've actually got some way of communicating with the machine. Okay, so I think with these trapdoor expansions, you are actually meant to turn the machine upside down and, and fit it um, from below. But since um, well, since we've got it open here, um, I can probably just do it this way around. Now, uh, the only question I have is I don't know which way round it's meant to go. Um, they don't appear keyed in any way. Uh, is there a pin one marker? Hmm, if there is, it's not obvious to me. I, uh, I don't know. Would it have gone this way? Would the, oops, I'll move the cap. Would it have gone this way? That sort of feels like it fits in that slide. Uh, this way. Yeah, no, that won't, that won't fit, will it? So, okay, I think it's going to have to be chip side up. And we'll try and align this... Uh, this large connector. What is that? Is that a 60 pin? I don't know. I'd have to uh, I'd have to count those. Two by two by thirty, is it? Gosh, that's uh, that's probably corroded on the inside as well, isn't it? There we go. I'm going to put that half in. Right now, that switch was in the uh, disabled position, I think. Um, so let's. Um, Let's throw the switch. We'll put the Amiga test kit uh, disc uh, back in the GoTech and uh, we'll have a little look. Okay, so we've got that switch set to disable. Uh, all of our connections are here, so we'll throw the switch. We're just about in shot, I think. Uh, can you see the screen there? Yeah, we've got PAL RGB and you can see Amiga test kit. Yep, great. So memory. It says, it says, memory. it says half a megabyte of uh, total memory, which is half a megabyte of chip RAM. Chip RAM, as I understand it, is the same as, or similar to ST RAM in, uh, in the Atari world, which is memory that is accessible both by the processor and by the onboard, um, the motherboard chips. So for example, the graphics chip uh, and uh, the, the DMA, the, the, the memory that's DMA accessible. Uh, fast memory, none. Slow memory, none. I, I, I'm a bit less sure the difference between fast and slow memory, but uh, basically that would be CPU only memory. So chip memory is what I think this um, expansion here will uh, provide. So I suspect if we throw the switch, if everything's working, this should go up to one megabyte. 
Let's uh, give that a quick go. Although, um, obviously, with the damage caused here, it's entirely feasible that, uh, that it simply won't boot. So I'm throwing that switch, which is very stiff, probably full of all sorts. And we'll try that again. Still got our green light. There it goes. Floppy light comes on. Brilliant. So it booted at least. If we go to memory, okay, so it hasn't detected that memory. It's still showing half a megabyte of uh, chip. And it, well, at least it's not failing. Uh, okay, so perhaps that wasn't that surprising. Um, damaged board is damaged. Okay, so perhaps no surprise that, uh, that that didn't work. The chips do look in pretty uh, tatty condition, although uh, I don't immediately see any damaged traces there. It's entirely possible that this crusty, crusty switch is simply not making contact. So there are a few minor things, you know, simple tests that I could do on that to see whether there's anything obvious. Um, whether I'm going to be too concerned about getting that to work, I, I really, I really don't know. That's that's maybe a a project for another day. So there we go. As you can see, we've got a perfectly working Amiga 500 now, running nicely uh, away here. We've got some projects for the future. This uh, uh, replacement keyboard controller card. Uh, perhaps having a look at uh, repairing this one megabyte or half megabyte expansion. Um, I think the old membrane can safely go in the bin now. Uh, and thank you very much to Kai Wheats for the, uh, the electric screwdriver. I have actually put this on charge for a little bit. And yeah, you can hopefully see that that is going a bit quicker. I think I just uh, uh, picked it up when it was flat. So I won't do, do a full review of this, obviously. I haven't read the instruction manual yet, and it's not even charged. But if this uh, is something that you think you, uh, you would like in your life, I'll put the links in down below to the, uh, the Amazon page, and I'll let you guys have a look at that. So that's all for this time. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Okay, just a quick postscript actually, um, because this was a very quick uh, change that I did uh, just after finishing recording. Um, I buzzed out that switch on that memory expansion and sure enough there was no contact made uh, when it was in enable mode. So I've soldered a header in here, I had to display the pins a little bit because they're a little bit wider, and I've put a jumper on instead. So that's jumpered in the on position and uh, sure enough that now detects as half an extra megabyte of slow RAM, uh, interestingly. So uh, half megabyte of chip, that's the onboard stuff, no fast and half megabyte of slow. So I, I got that wrong, I assumed it would expand chip, uh, chip RAM, but uh, it lets us uh, test that memory range there and um, it's gone through a few uh, circuits um, offline and uh, all seems very happy. So. Um, well, brilliant. I'll, um, I'll have to get on with uh, giving that board a proper clean-up because uh, if I leave it in there, I don't want any of the, uh, any of the corrosion to spread. Um, you can see actually that the chips are still pretty furred up there and uh, that could all migrate back across into my main board. So uh, I think that's going to go and have a little bit of a vinegar bath again. Catch you next time.